Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co-host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. Today, we're going to be talking about some basement waterproofing tips. We'd like to thank Miss Vet the Voluptuous One for liking and sharing the podcast. About 5600 BC, archaeologists found some homes in the former Yugoslavia that had concrete floors. Really? <laughs> and then around 3000 BC, we talked before about the Egyptians mm-hmm. and uh, what they were doing with mortars. And then poured concrete slabs for homes didn't take off until after World War II. Really? Which is interesting. So basements became popular in the 50s in the Midwest and Canada where concrete foundations were needed to be below the frost line anyway. Mm -hmm. So they figured, you know, why not make use of that space? And then, you know what's rare in the UK? No. Basements. Really? No screens, no basements. (laughs) The things you find out in our podcast. (laughs) For these tips, we're assuming you can see your basement walls, whether it's poured concrete, concrete block, or bricks. Well, if you have a finished basement and you have a problem, you're going to have to see your walls. Right, at some point. We need, we need to see what's going on. If you have a wet and musty smelling basement... That's bad. You, you want to find out whether it's moisture coming through the walls or the floor, or if it's just a humidity problem. Mm-hmm. One test you can do is take some plastic or aluminum, about a foot square, use duct tape and tape this to your walls and your floor and leave it there for 24 hours. If there's condensation on the outside, then you have a humidity problem. Mm -hmm. If there's condensation on the inside of that, then you need to waterproof your wall or floor. And if it's a humidity problem, you can just use a dehumidifier or, you know... And refer back to our podcast about dehumidifiers. (laughs) Right. Exactly. Just go to that episode. (laughs) You know, besides that musty smell in your basement, if you have a finished basement and you're seeing signs of rust on things, you know, your post appliances, if Mm -hmm. you have peeling paint or floor tiles are starting to come up, even condensation on your windows in the basement, that can kind of let you know that you've got too much moisture down there. there. There's definitely some type of problem. Right. And these problems do not go away. They just get bigger and bigger. So right. you have to address them immediately. Yeah, and you can damage your foundation if you have active leaks. So if you have a moisture problem in your basement, one of the first things you can do is work on the grading away from the foundation. Your what does gutter. That mean? So you want the soil to slope away from the house. So there's a lot of building codes that say you should have a six inch drop mm. in that first 10 feet around the perimeter of your house. And then some pros are suggesting six inch slope for six feet away. And then at 12 feet away from your foundation, it should drop 12 inches. Wow. So this is something very easy that any homeowner can do. You can get topsoil, work it in, and kind of create your own grade away from the house. Mm -hmm. Or if, I mean, if you want to get wild and really rework it, you can run a bobcat and then, (laughs) you know, really dig up the the earth. Yes, I'm sure most people are going to do that. Oh, it'd be fun. And it's only like 200 bucks a day (laughs) for a bobcat. Yeah. (laughs) Such a deal. What a great excuse to rent a bobcat. (laughs) Once you have your grading done, then you got to look at your gutters. Make sure that they're extending at least 10 feet away from the foundation if you're having a moisture problem. Mm -hmm. And then some of the experts I was reading, they're suggesting now to have your downspouts end 20 feet away from the house, and it makes a substantial difference Mm -hmm. on the amount of water that's right against your foundation Mm -hmm. and and just pushing against it. And there's a bunch of kits you can buy that you can attach to the end of the downspout. Some of them automatically unroll when it's raining, Hmm. and then when it finishes raining, it rolls back up. Wow. And it... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's spooky. And then some of them you have to, you know, physically curl up. And then we've talked about it before, you know, expanding the landscape area mm-hmm. around your house really, you know, is effective for not having all that water next to the house. So you're saying you shouldn't dig a moat around your house? <laughs> yeah, or a swale. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yes, dig out all around your house. Get stilts. <laughs> And then it's important just to check the gutters a couple times a year. And a lot of people forget that because even if you jump up on the roof and it looks like your gutters are pretty free of debris and leaves, there can be material in the downspout that's slowing the flow of water. So Mm -hmm. it's nice to get a a hose up in there and see if it's draining properly because what can happen? I mean, there can be thousands of gallons on your roof during a a thunderstorm. Mm -hmm. And so that water, if it's, you know, impeded going down the downspout, it can just pour over the top of the gutter. And now this water is going straight down against your house. So it's like you don't have any gutters. Right, right, exactly. So, you know, that's a great habit, especially for new homeowners. Get up there, take a, take a hose, and check your gutters, check your downspouts, making sure it's all flowing properly. 
I was on a couple of these forums where they were talking about waterproofing, and there's a bunch of the professionals that said that they've helped homeowners with just the grading, mm -hmm. the downspouts, and the gutters, and that solved their moisture problem. Mm -hmm. So this is something easy you can do yourself, and do that first before you you know jump into any big excavation around the house or, or dropping a lot of money into it. Well, I was watching a home improvement show on TV, and they uh, were having a problem with water in their basement, right. and one of the main things they did was just take out. They had all this. They built up you know cinder blocks and this really beautiful landscaping all around their house uh -huh. and so they made a nice deep bed where they had these deep trees and so they had the problem with the roots getting into the uh, right. everything and then all the water just right. seeping into the concrete. And that's a problem. Concrete. People don't realize putting trees right next to your foundation, those mm -hmm. roots can actually beat up your foundation and well, cause and cracks. Then, right, and then your pipes too. Right. If you have cracks and gaps in your foundation, you should fill them. And the polymer-based crack fillers, waterproof epoxies, and urethanes were rated the highest. Mm -hmm. You can also use hydraulic cement. If you use hydraulic cement, you can clean out your cracks, and then you need to take some type of concrete or masonry chisel and chisel it out. And you, don't, you want to open it up a little bit so you can force in the hydraulic cement, but you don't want to create a, a V that you can see. So if you're looking at a crack, on the left side, you would be angling into the left, and on the right side of the crack, you'd be angling into the right. So you're almost making a dovetail inside the wall. Okay. So rather than a V that you can see, it's going to be a V inside the wall that you can't see. <laughs> and then when you put that hydraulic cement, hydraulic cement's cool because as it cures, it slightly expands. So if you have this inverted V inside the wall, it's mm -hmm. going to expand and wedge itself in there and lock itself in. Wow, you sound super excited about this. <laughs> I've done this a few times on a bunch of the properties we invested in. Correctly. And it, and it did a, 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 <laughs> after the second or third time. <laughs> And, and the stuff sets up fast, so you really have to mix just a little bit at a time, I found out. Huh. <laughs> I've ruined a couple of containers. <laughs> Here's a whole bag of it. So mix a small amount at a time. It's going to set up in two to three minutes, and you want it to be a putty-like consistency. Mm -hmm. You're going to wear chemical-resistant gloves and goggles because you don't want to get this on you. Mist the crack that you're working on with a spray bottle, and then you're going to force this into the crack. With what? So you can use your hands and just force it in, and then use a putty knife to scrape it smooth. Hmm. The one complaint with hydraulic cement is it becomes very stiff and it can crack over time if you're repairing cracks that have any movement in them, so you just have to be aware of that. You can purchase epoxy or urethane crack filling kits and get a kit that's going to work with the material. So if you have a wet surface, there's different chemicals that will work with damp concrete mm -hmm. and then some need to be on dry. And that's what's interesting about hydraulic cement. You can actually use that on damp concrete, even on an active leak if it's not too bad and it'll set up underwater. Wow, that's space age. <laughs> with these kits, there's a couple different styles. Some you can use a caulk gun to inject the material. With others, they've got a bottle with a plunger built in. And all of these are going to have little ports that you're going to connect a hose to. And then you're going to cover the top of the crack. They're going to give you some type of sealant. You're going to put these little ports along the crack you're going to cover the outside of the crack, and then you're going to force this chemical into the lowest crack, or into the lowest port, rather. Mm -hmm. You're going to slowly fill it until it starts coming out the port just above it, and then you're going to pull off your hose. You're going to cap that first port, put your hose into the next one up, and keep injecting this all the way to the end of the crack. Wow. So it's pretty interesting. It really goes in deep, and most of these kits are rated very high. Have you ever used one? You know, I had a company actually come out. So a couple of houses that I had, I had a company come out mm -hmm. and do it, and I watched it. It was actually interesting to see them do it, and the, we never had a problem with water on those cracks again. If you're doing it yourself, it, some of these kits can be messy, so make sure you're putting down disposable drop claws and you're wearing protection mm -hmm. when you're doing it. If you buy the kits, they start at like one to two hundred dollars, depending on how many cracks you have. And then if you hire a company, I've seen it from three hundred to seven hundred dollars just for a few cracks. Interesting. For damp walls, you can get waterproof coatings, almost like paint. You roll it on like a paint. And again, you want to match your surface. So you need to know whether it's concrete, concrete block, or brick, and match that to the product. Mm -hmm. Also, whether the surface is going to be damp or dry. Zinser, so Z-I-N-S-S-E-R, has something called Watertight LV, and they spell Watertight, W-A-T-E-R-T-I-T-E. And this is a concrete masonry paint. It's a polyurethane formula that can be used inside or outside. Hmm. And it's and you have to make sure that there's no paint or any sealers on the surface that you're doing. And they say it stops 12 
pounds of pressure per square inch of hydrostatic pressure. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> Bear has a basement and masonry waterproofing, and this can be used inside and out, and this will stand up to 10 pounds of hydrostatic pressure. They want you to put two coats of this on, hmm. and Bear is B-E-H-R. Drylock has their extreme masonry waterproofer. This is also interior or exterior. Drylock is D-R-Y. L O K. You are not on your game today with your spelling. <laughs> this will stand up to 15 pounds of hydrostatic pressure. And these were rated very high for just a kind of a paint. Mm -hmm. There's a product called Super Thorough Seal, and this is a cement based waterproofing. And you put this on with a Tampico brush. Yeah. So a Tampico brush is made from the fibers of the Mexican agave plant. Well, duh, everybody knows that. And that, that fibers, they're heat, they're alkali, and acid resistant. Hmm, I didn't know that. <laughs> a couple other top rated products was Lithotech LS9500. And that's L I T H I T E K Permaquick, and it's P E R M A Q U I K. And they say that this will penetrate two inches into concrete, and you mm -hmm. can use this on damp concrete. Zypex, it's X Y P E X. This is another one that penetrates and seals the pores, and it actually pulls the product into the concrete to seal it. Mm -hmm. Radon seal, and this one's pretty interesting. This, they say, penetrates four inches into the concrete and seals the pores, and it actually stops radon from getting into your house. And then Sanitred, S-A-N-I-T-R-E-D, and this is a three-part system. So it's liquid rubber that you put on, and there's three different products that go on, mm -hmm. and they say that it gets to, it, it almost feels like the sidewall of a rubber tire. It's so <laughs> thick. And this also is designed to stop radon and any moisture from penetrating. That's cool. With some of these more expensive products, I would call their tech support and make sure that you're matching the material that you have in your basement and right. the moisture content. And also ask for a sample. Some of these companies will send you out a small sample kit or you can buy mm -hmm. just a small sample. To make and, sure it'll work on your, yeah, exactly. your situation. Yep. Are you going to educate us now about radon, even though we're going to do a future podcast about it? <laughs> so a tease. So the EPA says that radon is the number one cause of lung cancer in non-smokers. Hmm. It's amazing. 20,000 people every year, they say, die because of radon. Really? And primarily in our homes. So the EPA estimates 1 in 15 homes have a high radon level, and they suggest that you should be testing this once every two years. And how do you do that? So you've got all these kits, and you should definitely look for something that says EPA approved. Mm -hmm. They've got short-term kits that you only need three to seven days, but it really fluctuates a lot. And then the long-term tests are from eight days up to a year. And in a future episode, you'll find out more about that. <laughs> for a more permanent solution to your water problem, most pros suggest some type of French drain. And you can are either... you going to explain that? Sure, if you want me to. <laughs> you can either do it inside or outside. So if you do a French drain inside, what they'll what a pro will do is they will jackhammer the floor. They're going to remove about a foot of the flooring. So this is going to be messy. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, this is going to be very messy. So all around the perimeter, you're going to jackhammer out a foot from the wall. They're going to lay down perforated pipe and stone. They're going to connect this to a sump pump, so they'll create a sump pit. They're going to pour concrete over the top of this, so you'll have a finished floor again. But they're going to leave a two-inch gap all along the edge and so as water comes through your walls and the foundation walls it collects into this pipe and goes down into the pit hmm. and then the sump pump ejects it out of the house so then you can finish your basement after yes this yes is yeah this this so in most cases this is going to solve it and you're not going to have the water problem anymore what does this cost i've seen it go anywhere from two thousand dollars to ten thousand dollars for mm, teaching for for inside depending on the size of your basement mm -hmm. the problems you have because they might have to address other things other cracks and, and foundation problems and then also whether you have one or two pits with you know one or two sump pumps can you do this yourself you could yeah you can probably run all the tools and do it yourself It'd be how a, much a, is the cost of a jackhammer is i don't you know i didn't check to the bobcat <laughs> <laughs> no but that's got to be cool too <laughs> You can also waterproof from the outside, and many professionals say this is the only way to really get the permanent waterproofing. Mm -hmm. So you can dig all around the foundation walls, six to eight feet down, depending on your house, and then you're going to apply waterproof material. So you're either, it's a tar-like substance, and mm. you've got waterproof membranes that you embed into this, 
and it's going to stop water from you know even being against the foundation walls. The problem with this is now you're dealing with porches, driveways, landscaping, so it becomes a, a little bigger ordeal. And a lot more expensive. And a, yeah, and more expensive. To this, you can add exterior French drains. Mm -hmm. The first French drains were just trenches that were dug all around the house, and then they filled it with stone. Mm -hmm. So water would get into this, and then it would be pitched away from the house and end up you know, like a, in a garden area. So all this water would be pulled away, and so there's just none of this hydrostatic pressure hmm. against the foundation walls. You and, don't have a year or country that this started in? No, I should have, though. <laughs> I'm step. assuming it's France. Yeah, many years ago. <laughs> If you want to create a French drain by yourself, you can just... Wear a beret. You can dig a trench about two feet wide, and you can either use a spade shovel or a grub hoe or a garden hoe. A what? So, so garden hoes, you know, you want to get a long handle. You know why you want to use a long handle? No. Because short handle hoes were banned in California in 1975 because they found that there were so many workers that were getting permanent back pain from these short handled hoes. Interesting. <laughs> interesting, huh? Anyway, use a long handle garden hoe, and and a hoe is interesting because you lift this up and you drop it down, and it cuts into the soil, and then you pull it, mm -hmm. so it's breaking loose these chunks of dirt and soil. But then you're going to need a, a spade shovel to dig it out and move it out of the trench. You're going to dig the trench about six feet deep, and then you're going to put perforated or slotted flex drain pipe in What's that. What's the difference? So one is holes, one is slots. And the, the the slotted flex drain, they actually say, get clogged less. Hmm. If you have holes in your pipe, you want to make sure that the holes are facing down. And then you're going to make sure, again, that's sloping away from the house, down and away. You're going to cover this with washed gravel. Then you're going to put filter fabric over the top of it. And then you can either put landscape material or soil on top oh, of that. So this trench is right next to your house, right? Right against the foundation wall, exactly. Mm -hmm. You're going to install, most pros recommend installing a port or a station where you can rod this out. Hmm, that's smart. Instead of digging the whole thing out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when it's clogged. You know what you can also rent? You can no, rent a, a walk. A a jackhammer. And a walk behind trencher. So this has this big blade. It almost looks like a chainsaw. Mm -hmm. And it digs down into the earth and grinds it up. So hmm. it actually helps break it up if you've got you know, tough soil to dig in. How much does it cost to have a professional put in a French drain? On a couple of the forums I was on, a bunch of homeowners said that it ran them right around $10,000. And this is something you could do yourself. So, like, if you took a summer and every weekend you wanted to, you know, get a workout. Just a couple hours a day for the rest of your life. You'd dig I, in your trench. I think this would be a great summer project. <laughs> and there's a, a lot of really interesting step-by-steps online that mm -hmm. you can get. If you're thinking about hiring a pro, I would look at the Better Business Bureau. Also, you can go to your state attorney's general's office, and they're going to have a list of complaints against companies. Mm -hmm. And then Angie's list was rated very high for their ratings. Right, and just some fun rating about complaints. <laughs> Any problems that you have with water in your basement have to be addressed immediately because it can lead to serious problems yeah. with structural damage, foundation problems. Right, and mold and mildew, it's mm -hmm. going to rot wood, you know, rust on your metal. And then something I forgot with the cinder block construction, they actually water fills inside the cinder block. Mm. When they're doing a French drain inside your house, they're actually going to drill weep holes in the cinder block wow. to, to drain that out of there. Mm -hmm. So, it, it, yeah, you definitely need to address it if, if there's a problem with water in your basement. Do you have anything else to add? I would say the first step is make sure that you're grading the soil away from your house. Extend your gutters at least 10 feet mm -hmm. away. Look and at then, your landscaping. That you don't have weird stuff right by your house. Yeah, and then make it bigger. Every year, make it bigger. <laughs> you can, I would Further away. I would check my gutters a couple times a year with a hose, make sure it's, it's doing its job. You can For just damp walls, you can use some of these roll-on products, and mm -hmm. many of them are rated very high. If you've got bad seepage or you've got you know a high water table, then you're probably going to have to go with something like a... a French drain inside or outside the house. And then look at professionals. And then rent a bobcat. If you rent a bobcat, <laughs> email me some pictures. Let's wrap this up. You can download our book, Home Improvement Solutions, Whatever Homeowner Should Know, book two. And leave us a review. If you like the book, leave us a review. Well, you shouldn't we... yell at people to leave us a review. <laughs> I'm just suggesting. If, if, you, you, like you, if book, you like the book, yeah. leave us a five-star rating and review. We need some on this Amazon. Is, that's why I always say that part. <laughs> because I sound nice. I sound too didactic. But yes. 
<laughs> you can, what else can you do? You can subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, or the Spotify mobile app. And if you enjoyed it for some reason, please leave us a five-star rating and review. <laughs> you can check out our home improvement videos on our YouTube channel, Fix It Home Improvement. And you can subscribe to that as well. You can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com. Talk to Cindy on Twitter at fixitcohost. Yeah. Tell me how sorry you feel when I get stuck with you. Anyways, thank you for listening. Talk to you next week.